Skyview HDX delivers an advanced, fully integrated comm radio solution, seamlessly controlled via a dedicated remote control panel or directly through any HDX display within the Skyview network. Its intuitive interface, combining responsive touchscreen functionality with tactile button and knob inputs, redefines comm radio management by streamlining pilot workload across all phases of flight. Unlike other radios, Skyview's comm interface offers intelligent frequency selection, allowing pilots to tune by airport identifier, station type, or geographic proximity, minimizing manual entry and eliminating the need for time-consuming frequency searches. In other HDX video lessons, we've discussed the functionality and operation of the comm panel module itself, how information is obtained and displayed using its intuitive interface of knobs, buttons, and a high contrast OLED display. In this video lesson, we will show you how these same features are available using the HDX touchscreen. Quick access to the COM radio menu page is accomplished by touching the COM status area within the top status bar on any HDX screen within the Skyview network. Alternatively, the pilot can select the menu button on the bottom main menu bar then simply touch the comm radio icon within the controls border on the menu screen. But all of his pilots know, sometimes weather conditions make touch actions difficult, so pilots may find using the knob a better option in turbulence. To do this, again, select the menu button on the main menu bar. Rotate the knob to move the cursor over to highlight the comm radio icon, and select by pushing the knob. I just want to take a moment to remind viewers that as just demonstrated, selections made using the touchscreen soft keys are also available using the knobs and buttons. We have smooth air here in the studio, so for most of this video I will be using the quicker and more intuitive touch actions. The COM radio menu page provides the pilot with information regarding the current status of the COM radio. It also provides frequency selection based on the selected airport. The airport identifier shown at the top of the COM radio menu page is critical to how the COM radio menu frequency lookup and selection works. Without an identifier displayed in this location, quick access to the frequencies associated with any airport will not be possible. There are a variety of methods and actions that can result in an airport identifier being populated here, and we will get to all of them eventually and those methods will be utilized many times throughout the AHDX Academy video series. For now, let me show you a simple method so that we can get back to talking about the features of the COM radio menu page. One of my favorite ways to load an airport identifier into the COM radio is through the NRST, or nearest feature, located on the main menu bar. Although this is not the only way to load an airport identifier, I find using this feature quite effective when in flight and we will use it for our demonstration purposes here today. For comprehensive information and a detailed tutorial on the nearest feature, including its utilization and advanced functionalities, please refer to the HDX Academy video lesson dedicated to the nearest feature, available on the Dynon YouTube channel. This lesson will only briefly cover the nearest feature, focusing mostly on the Dynon radio's functionalities. The nearest feature on the HDX screen is very similar to the APT button feature that is located on the COM radio panel. Just like the APT button on the COM panel, selecting the nearest button on the main menu bar will present the user with a list of airports to choose from. Also note that with the selection of the nearest feature, a few of our menu choices on the main menu bar have changed. We'll get into that in just a few moments. The default tab within the nearest menu will be the APT, or Airport tab. For now, let's not get distracted with the other tabs available and just look at the APT tab, as those tabs and their functions are covered in the nearest video lesson I just mentioned. As shown here on the nearest page, the airport list is displayed showing airport information, such as the airport chart symbol, airport identifier, distance and bearing from your aircraft's position, and the runway length all very useful information if trying to find an airport quickly. Using the knob or touch, 
you can now scroll through the entire list of airports within the search area. Keep in mind, this list is affected by the nearest list options filter as mentioned in the HDX Academy nearest lesson. Using a touch action or the knob to scroll, select an airport that you wish to load into the comm radio. Now looking back down at our main menu bar, select APT to comm to load the airport identifier into the comm radio. You should immediately notice the comm status area of all the screens, including the comm panel update with the airport identifier, demonstrating the system integration seen throughout the Skyview HDX system. It's just that easy. Now that we have the ability to load an airport, let's look deeper into the comm radio menu features. The comm radio menu page provides the pilot with the ability to quickly reference the active and standby frequencies, shown here in the main portion of the page. The active frequency, meaning the VHF frequency the radio is currently broadcasting on and monitoring, is displayed in green characters and located towards the top of the page. Just to the left of the frequency numbers is the identifier associated with that frequency, here shown as KDFW. To the right is the station type, shown here as TWR for tower. The standby frequency is shown in cyan just below, along with its associated station types. Changes made within the COM radio menu page are also reflected within the status window on the top status bar. This occurs across all HDX screens within the Skyview network. Furthermore, these adjustments are mirrored on the COM panel module. This exemplifies the integration of the Skyview network components and how they help reduce crew workload. Looking back to the COM menu page, users will see a soft touch key in the lower right hand corner labeled ATC. When pilots need to communicate with an approach or departure frequency for the airport, they will find that information by selecting the ATC button. Selection of this button will cycle through all of the available approach and departure frequencies associated with that airport. If more than one frequency is available, a number will be displayed after the identifier. This number has nothing to do with the hierarchy for the airspace and is assigned only to differentiate the frequencies within the Skyview database. Be advised that this button tunes ATC frequencies specific to the selected airport and will not provide information on other ATC frequencies such as center or en route stations. Those are available in other areas within the Skyview HDX and other lessons will address how to access that information. For those airports that do not have a departure or approach frequency associated with them, a notification of no ATC will be displayed momentarily in the COM status bar along with the COM panel. Located just above the ATC button is the tower soft key. Selecting this will bring up any tower and common traffic advisory frequencies associated with the airport. Just like the ATC information, if more than one tower frequency is available at the airport, the station identifier will be followed by a sequential number, TWR1, TWR2, etc. Scrolling through the available frequencies is done by multiple touches on the tower button. Again, the number that follows the station identifier has no association with the hierarchy for the airspace, and pilots should refer to other available information on the airport before operating within the airspace. If a Unicom or Multicom is associated with the airport, then UCOM or MCOM will be displayed. These CTAF station types, along with other options, are available. The next button is for ground frequencies, and as you might expect, selecting this button will bring up the ground operation frequencies of the airport identified. As with all other airport frequency selections, if there is more than one ground operation frequency, the system will cycle through them with multiple button pushes. If no ground frequency is available for the airport, then a no ground or no GND notification will be displayed. In regards to the ATIS button feature, I would suggest you think of this button as more of an airport weather and information button, covering not only ATIS frequencies, but also AWOS or ASOS frequencies. 
The Skyview database will simply tune and display the correct airport information type when selected. If the airport has both or multiple airport information frequencies, pressing the button multiple times will cycle through all the available choices. As an example, at KLAX, there are two ATIS frequencies and one ASOS. The system designates ATIS-1 and ATIS-2, and then cycles to ASOS. Since there is only one ASOS, there is no number assigned. At KCLM, there is an ASOS frequency available and only an ASOS. So when the ATIS button is selected, the standby frequency is tuned to this frequency and the station type is updated to show the ASOS designation. If no frequency is available, then like others, a no ATIS notification will be displayed. When the dual watch is enabled by pressing the soft key labeled dual, a green active bar appears on the top of the soft key. In addition, dual will be indicated in the top status bar in the comm status area. The Skyview comm radio will now monitor the active frequency for transmissions while also monitoring the standby frequency. The active frequency always receives priority in this configuration, even if the standby is continuously receiving, as typical on most ATIS frequencies. For example, if ATIS is on the standby and tower is on the active, the comm will receive ATIS continuously on standby when there is no tower activity. But when a tower transmission is received, it immediately takes priority and is heard exclusively. When dual watch is active, to help you determine whether the radio is receiving on the active or standby frequency, an arrow next to the RX symbol will point to which frequency is currently receiving. To initiate a swap of the standby frequency to the active, users can simply touch the swap soft key. This will immediately move the standby frequency to the active, and the active will now become the standby. This frequency swap, or flip-flop, should be seen in all HDX screens on the network, as well as the Dynon COM control panel. The COM menu page features a prominent 10-digit keypad, enabling direct frequency input via a touch or knob manipulation. Notably, the system employs a predictive input mechanism visually indicating valid frequency selections by selectively dimming unavailable options. This facilitates accurate and rapid frequency selection by the pilot. Once a valid frequency has been selected, it will automatically occupy the standby location. Having explored the functionality of the COM radio menu on the HDX, users should now possess an enhanced understanding of managing radio communications utilizing the Dynon Skyview HDX system. It is anticipated that the intuitive and innovative design principles of the HDX system will afford pilots of all experience levels the confidence and control necessary to optimize cockpit efficiency, particularly regarding radio communications. We will continue our series on the Dynon Com radio, its powerful features and controls when we show you the variety of ways to look up frequencies that aren't airport specific in another HDX Academy lesson. Thank you for watching this HDX Academy video lesson on using the Skyview HDX COM radio menu. For more educational content to assist you in heading for the skies, please visit the Dynon YouTube channel.